first of all, Teddy, I'd like to thank you very much for your time today okay. on behalf of the Coventry East Asian Film Society. Um, we were over in Udine. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to uh, meet there because we flew out on the Saturday. Uh, to begin, I just wonder, what were your thoughts of the uh, Udine Festival in general? Did you enjoy your time there? Yes, the weather is nice. And uh, people are nice, the food are nice. and. Uh, the most important, they, they like the film. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. Um, getting on to the film, Bodyguards and Assassins, Teddy. Uh, this is the f uh, one of the first uh, uh, with a partnership with Peter Chan, the production uh, mm. uh, as, as producer. Uh, now, I believe there's going to be a series of, of, of films kind of in that, with that production company, Bodyguards and Assassins, being one of, one of the uh, first to emerge. Mm. In relation to that, Bodyguards and Assassins. Would you say it is a inter, you had a, a, an international audience in mind? Obviously, you've it's screened at Udine now at Terracotta, or was it made for a very particular Chinese Hong Kong market? Actually, when I first started making films, uh, I I told myself uh, every story, every film that could happen in the whole world. Just like uh, the movie before I made, it's called Wait Till You're Older. Yeah. A boy uh, eats some supernatural power of medicine. Yeah. He grow up 10 years old every day. I think it would happen in Africa. Right. Okay. The British boy met a magician, a doctor that can bring up that kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. So in my mind is, is universe, universe, the, the, the universal, the story, the storyline that can happen in no matter like a, the film I make called Purple Storm, and uh, the, there's an American uh, film company called Weinstein, uh, Weinstein uh, uh, Miramax. They want to remake it in New York. So every film I, I did, I, I try to think that it, it could be happening in the whole world. Uh, okay. So, I mean, to move from, you mentioned the film you made previously, way too old, and moving on to Bodyguards yeah. and Assassins. It's, I mean, it's obviously on a much, much bigger scale mm. than, you, you, than, you, you, than your previous film. Um, in terms of the scale of Bodyguards and Assassins and the period of production, uh, 10 years, what was it that kind of kept you going during that period of time? It was such a long, drawn out process. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a kind of habit. Every year I bring out the script and read it again. Do I still fall in love? I still like it. And and the other side, the other hand, in the other hand is many investors come back to me every year, okay. every year. Yeah. Can we make this film? Yes. We like it, uh, but don't build a set. It's too expensive. Okay. So I, 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 I turn them down. I have to build a set. If you want to make a film, if you want to do it together, I have to make, build a set. So every year, every year, people come back to me from China, from States, and hey, take less to Bodyguard Assassins, mm -hmm. but no set. Yeah. No, I said no, I'm sorry, I, I, I won't do it that way. Okay. Um, so, with, with uh, uh, Bodyguards and Assassins, it's won obviously numerous awards recently at the Hong Kong uh, Film Awards. Would you say the film is a Hong Kong film? or a Chinese film, or a co-production? How would you view the film? I think this is one of the, after Warlock, the, the Peter Chan's yes, film. Yes, yes. I think it's, this is the one of the best co-production film in between China and Hong Kong. Okay. Suppose the story happened in Hong Kong yeah. in, the, in the 1905, yeah. but it is a, such a good co-production. Okay. Start from casting, pre-production, script, ideas, and and um, uh, building the set, mm -hmm. and, uh, casting, uh, mm -hmm. post-production, shooting. Mm -hmm. It's all team from China and Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the to to me myself mm -hmm. is the best co-production film I ever see. Oh, that makes it a, today is a bit success in a, in a in a Chinese film market. You okay. know. When you're making a film like Bodyguard, I know you just mentioned uh, Peter Chan's War Lords. Um, if you're making a film with an eye on the Chinese market, 
do you have to make, obviously, there's, there's so much talk about the censorship in China. Is it difficult to make uh, uh, the film you want to make for the Chinese, if you're aiming for a Chinese market? I mentioned war laws because um, I realise that there's an alternative ending to war laws, one for the Chinese and one for the Hong Kong market. Uh, is that is that a, is, is that a, a difficult thing to do? Is do you have to make a lot of concessions? You see, the China cent, the China uh, censorship right now mm -hmm. is they just they just just open the market. Okay. It is brand new. They yeah. only start for six or seven years. Yeah. They're trying to break some rules okay. uh, to make it more easier for everybody, but it's hard for them to. Open the, the market in in, in 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 just according to these five or six years. So I just uh, I give you an example. Like I have a serial killer film I'm gonna make, but oh, okay. but it, it won't be it never gonna happen in China within these three years. Okay. So I I'm not gonna push them to let me give give me the right to, to make the film. Okay. So I'm gonna look for a foreign uh, investor. It's not going to show in China, okay, but yeah. it's going to work out something in in Europe, okay. uh, in in states. Yeah. That's the way, both way to make right, okay. films. If you want to make it that way, yeah. just like a, you're studying in a Catholic school, okay. suddenly you change your Buddhism school, mm -hmm. you have to play the rule yeah. of the game of the school. Okay, yeah. Don't yeah. don't 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 be a yeah yeah. Because <laughs> um, of course, one of the films that screened at Udine was the Pang Ho Chung yes. Dream Home, which. It's never yes. going well. Yeah, right. I, I can't see it being released in China anytime soon. Um, so, what would you would you con kind of consider or constitute a Hong Kong film? Now, does it have to be in Cantonese? Mm, if if the story is a, a, a Cantonese guy meet yeah. a Beijing girl, okay. maybe the Beijing girl speak in Mandarin. Okay. Maybe. The, the boy, he tried to speak lousy Mandarin, right, okay. but for the communication. Yeah. I think there's more, if you want to make a film more realistic, yeah. so do it both ways. Okay. You, you, you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Um, do you think that, because, I mean, I asked that question, we, we uh, were fortunate enough, uh, to have an uh, um, interview with Clement Cheng and Derek Kwok, of course, they uh, screen Gallants at mm. Udine. And one of the things, the recurring things that seems to be said is that about Cantonese language cinema mm. is Hong Kong cinema. Um, and of course, Bodyguards and Assassins, therefore, we, could that be seen as a Hong Kong film or a Chinese film? Do you think that those boundaries are important now? Do you think that the distinction between Hong Kong and China, does it really matter now? I think, uh, like, uh Zhang Yimou's last film yeah. is not happening in Beijing. It's happening somewhere, uh, um, uh, what do you call that place? It's being special, their own language. Oh, yeah. 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 So the movie, if this happens in Hong Kong, okay. so we are, most of them are ho come from uh, Canton. Yeah. So they will speak in Cantonese. Yeah. So like Bodyguard and Sesson, the, the, the businessman yeah. is, from, is from China, is, yeah. is, is from uh, Beijing. So okay. he's speaking Mandarin. So Leung Kafa is from Hong Kong, so he was speaking in right. in, in Cantonese with the students. Yes. So it's more more real. The whole thing makes okay. the whole thing yeah. more real. But yeah. but when we but when we're gonna release in Beijing, so yeah. it's gonna be dubbed in Mandarin uh, okay. because they won't understand. Of course, yeah. Okay. Um,